And today, we're going to look to see if DeFi summer bound to repeat itself in 2021. We will take a deep look at the DeFi to see will we have a DeFi summer or will it be a DeFi bummer? Let's go. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, guys? You got Crypto Chuck back here to Book Crypto Black. Guys, today we're going to talk about something that people want to know about, people are excited about, and it's DeFi Summer, baby. Will DeFi Summer repeat again in 2021? Is DeFi Summer bound to repeat itself in 2021? Last year, we saw the DeFi space boom independently from Bitcoin. The DeFi Summer 2020, as it became known, acted as a prelude to this year's bull market. Guys, before we dig deep in the DeFi, make sure you guys go visit our website, www.cryptoblack.net. If you're brand new cryptocurrency and you want to learn about crypto um, and you're a beginner, visit our website, take the, our beginner's course. Also, you need a report to know, okay, what's a good day to trade, what's bad days to trade historically inside crypto, also inside stocks, options, whatever. Um, then, guys, click the description below. Uh, in the description below, click the link, get the Mastermind Oracle Report. And if you want to be a part of a major group, trading group, and you don't want to trade on your own, and you want to see the trade that we're doing and also, you know, uh, see different things that we're into, different tools we use, guys, in the description below, join us at DCG Mastermind, baby. But let's get right to it. It all started when the Compound Protocol released its own governance token, Comp, thus popularizing the concept of staking. Comp helped usher in the liquidity mining frenzy we see today. And during that time, we also witnessed how Yearn Finance native token, YFI, became the first cryptocurrency to ever surpass the price of Bitcoin. With the recent price correction and looming predictions from analytics predicting bearish times ahead of us it is possible that a DeFi summer 2.0 is just around the corner or that's a question the characteristics of the DeFi uh of last DeFi summer the industry is much more mature now than it was last year according to the data the uh total value locked or we like to call it tvl on DeFi protocols now sits at 54 billion dollars after peaking at 86 billion just last month i remember when it was 630 million all right. So it says a massive surge from the 680 million registered at the beginning of 2020. <laughs> I remember when it, was that, when it was like that. So it says the volume and number of users on decentralized exchanges have also registered exponential growth with each passing month. Just last month, Dex reported a, uh, a record of more than $140 billion in trading volume. Uh, interoperability wasn't a thing back then either, which meant that DeFi products operated primarily isolated from each other. Nowadays, thanks to the advent of cross-chain technologies, DeFi has become an increasingly connected space. Yeah, guys, we can transfer from ETH over to Matic Network or from Binance Smart Chain over to Matic and back and forth. Man, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's beautiful. So it says, new trends in the DeFi uh, market, the trend of food-related tokens like SushiSwap and Pickle Finance. Oh, don't forget about pancake swap, baby. Don't forget about the pancakes. Uh, seems to be here to stay. But what else can we expect in the eventuality, uh, in the eventuality of a second DeFi summer? There is now a surge of second generation. DeFi tokens that offer a variety of use cases and a multitude of cross-chain liquidity partnerships where protocols are able to leverage liquidity between each other. These second generation tokens can be used in multiple different blockchains and can be used for different use cases such as minting, NFTs, staking, etc. The new derivative services, including synthetic assets that represent stocks and other real-life commodities, new insurance services from which Tether Insurance is becoming increasingly sought after and the continuous growth of the non-fungible tokens space are some other tendencies to keep an eye on. Now it says another trend that has been building for a while is the evolution of automatic market making exchanges. This breed of DEXs, that's decentralized exchanges, guys, provided an entirely new trading model and has taken the crypto world by storm. 
Instead of conventional order book based exchanges, AMM based decks allow users to trade directly with liquidity pools and use an algorithm to set up the prices based on the depth of the assets available. Now, these exchanges are evolving and becoming more complex, providing aggregation models, privacy features, among many other useful tools that further add to the use cases of DeFi. The new technology spells bullish signs for DeFi. That says perhaps the most crucial development in the space is the scaling solution being adopted. With E2.0 potentially still years away from its final release, the high fees and congestion of the Ethereum network have highlighted the need for alternatives. The state of the network have improved considerably in recent weeks. Transaction fees have already plummeted from their all-time highs due to fewer transactions, but there's a growing usage of layer two scaling solutions like Polygon, Matic. Older networks like OMG, previously known as Omize Go, and one of the oldest scaling solutions and rating network, Ethereum's version of Bitcoin's Lightning Network may not be, uh, I'm sorry, may be not meet the high demands of the DeFi ecosystem. I think, yeah, they mixed that up. So Binance Smart Chain has gained a lot of ground in the last couple of months. I love Binance Smart Chain, guys. Foregoing some decentralization in favor of scalability, but although many DeFi projects choose to migrate to or adopt BSC, the network has recently been faced with congestion and a rising number of attacks on its DeFi projects. On the other hand, Polygon is now emerging as a serious contender recently surpassing BSC and even Ethereum in daily transactions. Guys, it's fractions of a penny to do trade on Polygon. I just do trades just do trades sometimes on Polygon. I hop in some hop right out. It's just a fraction of a fraction of a penny. So that Polygon offers many scaling solutions that include side chains and roll up a technology to bundle transactions off chain. Many Ethereum native DeFi projects such as Aave and Kyber Network are migrating to Polygon as the platform becomes fast tracked to become the go to scaling solution. And guys, I recommend everybody to go check out um, Aave and Kyber. I did a story on that last week with Kyber, but check out Aave as well and see how you can just pretty much just deposit on the Matic Network. You can just deposit your Matic on there or deposit whatever coins you want or whatever tokens you want on there. And you just get, you know, you're just going to get paid for it. Just, just let it sit there and get paid interest, a yield on it. And then they pay you a bonus yield in Matic. I mean, it's just like, it's just free money. So guys, check that out. So impact institutional investors flocking to DeFi after the large $1.5 billion uh, in Bitcoin purchases by Tesla, more and more companies are looking to enter the crypto space. Seen as a valuable and secure store of value, Bitcoin gives institutional investors an alternative form of investment and a hedge against fiat inflation and geopolitical uncertainty. DeFi, however, takes it a step further. Yield foreign protocols offer a most valuable alternative to, to traditional banking interest rates, which are already near zero in countries like the U.S., a multitude of different financial assets catered towards institutions being developed on the blockchain including decentralized insurance services like Nexus Mutual that allow significant risk mitigation. Institutions also worry about the legitimacy of DeFi platforms. That is why Chicago DeFi Alliance and other companies like Trustology are launching liquidity launch pads that act as DeFi firewalls. The DeFi projects are filtered and evaluated in terms of compliance, governance, and smart contracts code for institutional and professional investors to safely enter the industry. Now, while multitude venture capital firms like Grayscale and Chicago DeFi Alliance have already dove into space, extensive blockchain research also shows that several Ethereum well wallets belong to larger Fortune 500 companies such as Microsoft, IBM, Amazon, and Walmart. With added capital flowing into the market from these companies, the DeFi space will gain credibility and become more liquid and less volatile. As you guys know, more money coming to it. Some people more, more people control it at the same time, it becomes less volatile because more money is in it, so it could call it, it takes more money to move the market. So that's how it is. That's why I keep talking about Bitcoin. The more money that comes into Bitcoin, the less volatile it will be because it's gonna, it's gonna need more money to actually move the market because there's already so much in it. All right, so it says, What can be expected in the long term future for DeFi? 
The potential of DeFi is so great that it's often hailed as the future of finance. We are witnessing the, 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 the democratization of financial services as DeFi allows anyone to build their own financial instrument, instruments and share them with others over the blockchain. In a recent interview, Shark Tank investor and crypto enthusiast Mark Cuban was quick to highlight the considerable threat DeFi poses to, to traditional finance, uh, stating that banks should be scared. Re, re, uh, Replicating the current financial infrastructure of the blockchain could prove highly beneficial and help reduce costs in global payments, investment banking, and asset management. The advantages of automatic, automated and trusted systems like DeFi could potentially uh, cannibalize a large portion of capital currently held in the traditional financial market. However, it is almost sure that both ecosystems will coexist. Some of the great advancements concern in our ability within the sector itself and building bridges between DeFi and the traditional financial sector. Improved oracles, which feed increasingly more accurate real-world data, as well as crypto-backed derivatives that represent real-world commodities like stocks are some examples of increased interconnectivity between DeFi and CeFi. The road ahead, however, for mainstream adoption to happen, user experience needs improvement. And complex protocols need to be made even more straightforward for end users through friendly interfaces. Another major hurdle is also the lack of legislation. In order for decentralized autonomous organizations, in other words, DAOs, the governance model behind many DeFi projects to have an impact outside of crypto, must uh, they must abide with a legal framework. However, the whole DeFi is still in the Wild West stages and resembles the ICO craze of 2017 with unsupervised activity and a lack of regulatory clarity and know your customer policies. If these hurdles can be overcome, it only speeds up the DeFi revolution that will happen in upcoming decades. And guys, I keep telling everybody, DeFi is my sector in crypto. It's my favorite sector in crypto. I love DeFi. Um, but yeah, guys, it, it's, what this here with DeFi, you got to understand when you're dealing with DeFi, you know, it's it's a trustless, it's the protocol that you're worrying about. You're worrying about there's no bugs or anything like that. There's not centralized, totally decentralized finance. So you just connect your wallet and then you're able to actually just deposit uh, coins or provide liquidity, meaning that uh, you're providing your coins for other people to trade. And when they do that, every time they make a trade, you get a percentage of that actual trade. So you're pretty much the, you, you're pretty much the bank, all right? You're providing money to the bank, you know, and they're paying you higher yields. So um, and also you can stick it. You have coins just been sitting there. You can actually put it over there on different DeFi protocols, and you can stake it. Let it sit there and get paid, you know. So there's so many ways of making money in DeFi. And also the good thing about DeFi, especially if you're dealing with people, you know, to say they have bad credit or anything like that. DeFi, there's no, they don't care if you black, white purple, orange, green, man, woman, child. Listen, all you need is a wallet with collateral and what you need to borrow. And you can borrow, you can borrow whatever you want as long as you have enough collateral. It's that simple. The protocol works within itself. You connect your wallet. Say you have $10,000 of Bitcoin and you want to borrow five grand because you want to go and trade or you want to go and, and, and buy a new, a new car, or whatever you want to do, put down, put some money down for something or whatever you want to do, take a nice vacation and you don't have to worry about selling your Bitcoin. You don't have to worry about selling your Ethereum. You don't have to worry about selling your Matic or your like, whatever you want to do. You know, you just, uh, you just, you, you hook it up. And you go from there. C5 as well. The C5, which is centralized finance, which is which is you know more central is actual companies, all right. So uh that people know and they know the CEO and stuff like that. So, but yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this right here. Do you think it'll be a D5 summer 2021? Or you think, okay, you know what? We might be going to a bear market, and I don't think it's gonna be a D5 summer, it's gonna be a D5 bummer, all right. I'll see you guys in the next video. She got crypto chuck here with the, here with the group crypto black. We'll see you guys in the next video. Guys, make sure you stack your sats and chill. We out of here, baby. Peace.